Mark Scar on KIOW, proud to welcome in Mr. David Page. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm great. How's everybody doing? Well, hopefully well. Uh, exciting times for you. Of course, everybody knows you from Toto and a million other things, but you're breaking out for your first ever solo record. It's an EP called Forgotten Toys. Congratulations. That's right. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's very exciting for me. I feel like I'm released. Uh, I feel like I did when I released the first Toto record. It's kind of uh, butterflies, you know, the <laughs> eagerness. How is the uh, for the press and so forth that have heard it? Uh, what's the, what's the reception been so far that you've heard? The reception's been 100 percent positive. Thumbs up. People are just uh, really excited about it and really a positive support from all the fans and all the. Uh, friends and family and everything. Just love it. I was talking to Luke when he was doing press for his record, and he spilled the beans to me that you were working on this, and I, would, yeah. I too, was thrilled. Yeah. Yeah, Luke Ather, and uh, he's been doing solo records for a while. So is Joe Williams. So uh, they were very supportive of me and helped nudge me along into urging me into this time when, when COVID came. Uh, you have some free time here uh, in your studio, and let's start working on it. They, they, they were big supporters. The first taste that we've had is the Spirit of the Moonrise, and what a great song. How, how long has that been gestating? That's been a, that's been a few years here. Uh, I had a couple of pieces. I had the chorus piece, and then I had uh, the intro, and Joe helped me uh, arrange it and put it together. Uh, as a co-writer of the song and then helped me uh, frame it uh, lyrically. Helped, he helped me complete a narrative of I had a, I had a piece of a dream, uh, a reoccurring dream, and Joe helped me put it together. And uh, so that's been going for that's been going for a while. That one I've had that one in the closet. I had to dust that one off. That's one of the forgotten toys. And it reminds me, Dave, of something from Toto 14. It just would have fit in there pretty well. Uh, that's possible, but it's a little bit different. And, uh, you know, Toto stuff is, uh, uh, I have different people playing on this, you know what I mean? With, sure. uh, uh, it's just, it, it's not quite the same thing as Toto, but it may have fit on the, it may have fit on it. The album, okay. This album bookends, David, with uh, Forward and Lucy, a couple of maybe more jazzy pieces that uh, yeah. I'm sure it's cool for you to kind of stretch out on. Yeah. I wanted to open the album with something a little bit different than the normal uh, rock and roll song, so I uh, I did a, a piece uh, that I'm dedicating to Jerry Goldsmith, who's a great composer, and I had a chance to work with... Uh, on First Blood with Rambo, uh, the movies, the loan series. I produced the entitle to that. And I used Jeff Ricaro and Steve Lukather and David Hungate on that. We all played on that too. And the jazz one, Lucy, uh, comes from, uh, that comes from my dad uh, being a jazz pianist and, uh, and me teaming up with uh, my dad's, uh, the son of my dad's uh, colleague, uh, Mel Torme, who he made great records with. Uh, I teamed up with uh, uh, James Torme, who did some scat singing on it, and some moves and some odds. So uh, that's my, uh, that's another, just another side of me that fans probably haven't seen. Certainly. Let's talk about the rest of the songs. Well, I Belong to You is a, a nice way to kind of kick off the, the record vocally. Yeah, I think that's uh, really indicative of uh, uh, the style that I have when I'm right with Joseph Williams. And uh, uh, it was a great, it was fun putting the pieces together on that one again. That was like a puzzle. We didn't quite know what it was until we got some, some of the pieces put in. And then we made some transitional music to help get from one place to another. And uh, it was just a joy working with Joseph again. You know, he had the, he had the chorus and I kind of did the verses and uh, we just they just seem to fit together. And then you kind of bring the record down to, uh, a, a, a little bit with uh, First Time. Right. That's a, com com uh, a coming-of-age song. I wrote that about my daughter because she's growing up. And 
uh, wishing in the, my heart's desires that she finds the right person, she finds the right soulmate, and uh, she even made a little singing cameo on it uh, with me in there uh, after the second chorus. You can hear her singing. So it's a, it's a very uh, special song for me, uh, being that me and my daughter are doing a little duet on it, and uh, uh, it's very close to my heart uh, watching her grow up all, after all these years. Talking with David Page about Forgotten Toys, the new EP coming out August 19th, and Queen Charade, another great song. Yeah, Queen Charade, uh, I like doing things, I like showing my reckless side a little bit more here, you know. Uh, I like, I'm a diehard Rolling Stones fan, mm. and I got a chance to pull a work on Keith Richards' solo record, his last one that he put out. I did an overdub on it for Steve Jordan, and it was just a, my, a, a pinch me moment, you know, like a bucket list thing. And uh, I'll never forget uh, hanging out with Keith and uh, getting to hear his album and also getting to play on one of the tracks. So it, it inspired me to, to finish this song that we I kind of had in the closet again. These are old toys that, are, that, that I kind of even forgot about that I'd written uh, uh, parts of this song before, so I decided to go ahead and finish it. And uh, it has it has Steve Jordan on drums, who, uh, by the way, is the new Rolling Stones drummer. Mm -hmm. So I really got the, the feel of it right. And Luke, Steve Luke, there's on rhythm guitar, and I have Don Felder on slide guitar, which made made it extra special for me. Right, of course, for the uninitiated, Don was in the Eagles. You've got Nathan East on this record. You've got Greg Bissonette. Of course, some Toto alum with Warren Hamm and Lenny Castro and Davey Johnstone, among others. Yes, yeah, Davey Johnston from Elton John Band and uh, uh, Greg Bissonette from Ringo and Warren Hamm from Ringo. And uh, it's just all my friends kind of uh, said, we want to play on your record. So... So I just had to cast it properly and uh, let them in one at a time. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're with David Page. Of course, Michael McDonald makes an appearance on Spirit of the Moon Rise, and you got Ray Parker Jr. just runs the gamut. Yeah, the, like I said, those are friends of mine who I've kept in close uh, musical contact with, and they're colleagues and have been friends for years. So uh, uh, it was only befitting that uh, I have some of them uh, play on my record with me. And I mentioned Toto 14 earlier. All the Tears That Shine, an original version was on that. You revisit it here. I did uh, because, uh, uh, first of all, to honor Mike Sherwood, who passed away this last year. And uh, he's the person singing on it. And uh, he did such a great vocal. I really wanted to, uh, like I said, honor him and put this version out, which is a stripped down version of the other of the other uh, cut that we did on Total 14. It's stripped down. It has acoustic bass on it, and uh, it's him singing. And like I said, the vocal is so compelling and so passion full of passion and humanity that I thought it, it, was, it had to be heard. David, tell me about the album cover itself. The album cover itself was um, inspired by uh, the movie To Kill a Mockingbird which has a little cigar box full of small collectibles in it. And uh, my wife, who uh, is a food stylist and shoots food, food commercials, does also miniature photography. And she did the art direction. It was her concept to come up with uh, the, all the collectibles and artifacts on the, on the album cover. And that's all, all things that belong to her and myself that she had in a, in a box. And she just she arranged the whole shot and uh, conceived it, and uh, that was her uh, brainchild. It, was, it has little uh, uh, hidden hidden surprises in there. If you if you look closely, you'll find them. We're talking with David Page about Forgotten Toys. I wanted to get into some other things. Jim Seals, we just lost Jim. I know you knew him. Yes. Jim Seals was was a mentor to me, a teacher, and I did my first hit record with him when I was 18. I played on Diamond Girl, and that kind of uh, uh, opened the door for me to do other record dates. And uh, 
he was such a genius and uh and i was able to learn from him on on perfecting how to perfect and write songs uh, uh he uh, i was like an apprentice to him uh and learning how to write and sing and do harmonies and i can't say enough about him he was a guru spiritual very spiritual person from the baha'i faith and uh i can't so i got to tour with him with seals and crofts as jeff and hungate did and uh uh he's one of those unforgettable icons that uh, i'll always remember you know of course you had a lot of success with boz skaggs yeah boz uh jeff Ricardo introduced me to boz skaggs and he was getting ready to make another album and he wanted to co-write it with a keyboard player so jeff recommended me and i thank him for uh, every day for that uh and we uh, sat down at my father's uh, house and, and uh, got on his grand piano and wrote uh, uh, three quarters of the album, I believe. And uh, that was a very special project. I think it was uh, ahead of its time a bit. And, uh, but it was right when we were in our, we were in our, our uh, hot zone there, total, the total rhythm section. Myself, David Hungate, and Jeff Ricaro, and even Louis Shelton played on it, who was the Seals and Cross producer, uh, played guitar, like on Lowdown. And uh, uh, again, that was, the, that was the project I, I think launched Toto. Uh, had it not been for that, I, don't, I think our launch would have been delayed, but that helped us get in the limelight of the record companies. And uh, we were able to, to uh, uh, start our careers from there. Mm -hmm. Of course, you were also associated with Steely Dan. Yeah, we were playing around the time we, I started playing with the Seals and Crofts. Uh, uh, Jeff had uh, a friend of Steely Dan's named Denny Diaz, and uh, they asked Jeff and David Hungate and me to play on a couple songs on Pretzel Logic, which was Night by Night, and uh, that was the one song I played on. Jeff played on another song, I think Parker's Band or something. And uh, then the uh, Katie Light album, uh, I played on uh, Black Friday and uh, Dr. Wu. And it was always an experience, a learning experience. Again, great teachers, great uh, songwriters, and uh, a lot of fun, real cynical New Yorkers. And I say that with a smile on my face because uh, uh, they were both uh, just iconic, you know, to be around. Talking to David Page, and of course, people might be surprised to know that you co-wrote Got to Be Real for Cheryl Lynn. Oh, yeah. That was going on the same time as the first Toto record. My dad had seen her on the Gong Show, believe it or not, hmm. and called CBS and wanted to find out if he could produce her, because she was such a great talent. And the first thing we did is I sat down and I played the riff to uh, Got to Be Real, and Cheryl started singing. And the rest is history. We brought David Foster in to finish a little bit of it up. And uh, voila, we had champagne on, on tape. And uh, uh, that turned out to be a great record. And uh, uh, I still love hearing it today. Talking with David Page, and of course, I can't not talk about the work with Michael Jackson and how pinch me that must have been. Yeah, that was real special, you know, working with Michael and working with Quincy. You know, you, that's those, that's the elite. That's that's rarefied air, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And and it's again, Quincy is such a great teacher. I've known Quincy since I was 14 because my father, who was a jazz arranger, worked with him on some of his solo records. And uh, uh, so they kept their relationship going, and I met Quincy and got in with him and uh, became one of his go-to guys, along with Greg Fillingaines and David Foster. And uh, it was real experience with Michael Jackson being in a room with him because he was such a perfectionist and he had such an open mind uh, artistically. Uh, he was a pleasure to work for, and I can't say enough about him. He's the top of the list as far as it comes to gifted, talented uh, uh, artists. And, of course, you got to work with Sir Paul McCartney. I did. I did. I helped arrange uh, uh, The Girl is Mine for Quincy Jones. 
and George Martin was there, and Jeffrey Emick were there, and Linda McCarty was there, and Paul and, and, and Michael. And that was a real pinch me moment again, you know, uh, to, to be in the presence of Paul McCartney, who's probably my favorite songwriter, uh, at least one of them. And uh, uh, to be in a room was just exhilarating, you know, and I, it was uh, like a dream come true. David, every time I hear Hold the Line, I have to turn my radio up to this day. It's just, uh, <laughs> I know it was a big one for you, the first one out of the shoot. It was, and it was our, it was funny because I, uh, it's a song that I, I started to riff when I moved out of my, my parents' house and I got my first apartment. I started playing this riff when I got an upright piano into my apartment. I started playing the, the opening riff and I must have played it for three days. I think people were knocking on my door to stop and I think I got an eviction notice from the landlord and, uh, uh, I just kept playing this riff. And then when I got down to rehearsal, to rehearsal for the first time with the band, um, I probably finished the verses and lyrics. And uh, that's when Toto became Toto. As soon as we heard Bobby, added Bobby Kimball to the mix, he starts singing, hold the line, and Luke was playing, and Jeff, it sounded, uh, basically the first rehearsal sounded like the record. So it, it was, it'll always be a special place, have a special place in my heart. Forty years ago, David Toto Four. That was so monumental for you guys. Yeah, Toto Four was a special album. It was a trans. We were in our transformative uh, period right there because we were going through just experimenting with sounds and engineers and different uh, types of writing. And but uh, the record company let us know that uh, we had one more chance to uh, come through with a hit that that hit single that's so important for artists it seems today, that uh, I sat down and, and put all my eggs in one basket here and wrote Rosanna, hoping that would be have enough uh, hooks in it and enough uh, uh, meat and potatoes to uh, please the, uh, the, uh, some of our listeners and some of our non-listers out there. So uh, uh, it was a very special record. We had Al Schmidt, Grammy Award winning the engineer on it and it, it was again it was it all came together during that album and i'm very proud of it and very proud of the guys that played on it and oh by the way africa was on that too africa was on that too that was 11th hour song the album was basically done and uh so i started i always kept keep writing uh, even though an album was done uh i brought in this song uh africa that I'd written on a, a new instrument that I got, which is a CS80, and it had that sound that you hear in the verses. And uh, uh, again, it was a special song uh, that just came came uh, to me very quickly, and uh, we we took a very careful uh, steps to make sure that it, it came off very. It had this real ethnic uh, uh, loop to it that Jeff Picaro did with Lenny Castro and it kind of propels uh, the song along and uh, you have Joe Percaro on it on, on uh, authentic uh, uh, marimbas and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's it's been an iconic song for Toto and it's just one of those uh, pleasant surprises Talking with David Page, uh, I don't know if uh, certainly the Toto fans will know, but a few years ago, some of you guys were able to get together and work on a box set called All In, and you were kind of able to revisit and retweak all some of that stuff. Oh, the box set, yeah, we were able to retweak. Yeah, we went in with um, uh, Al Schmidt was there, and uh, uh, Elliot Shiner was there, two of the greatest engineers on the planet, and we went to into mastering and got to remaster all the records here and, and fix them up and make them more modern sounding and that was a real pleasure and a real eye opener to uh, or an ear opener as the case may be mm -hmm. uh, to listen to our progression how we progressed all through the albums through the years and the current lineup of Toto got together I guess during the pandemic and filmed a DVD and released a CD uh, it mm -hmm. just sounds the, kill, the band is just killer a little help from my friends yeah that was that's the new Dogs from Oz touring band for Toto, 
and uh, I couldn't be more pleased with it. They made me the official honorary MD, musical director, so I get to help pick the songs and uh, and, and rehearse the band with along with Steve Lukather and Joseph Williams. And uh, every player is special in that. Uh, it sounds it's so uh, much like Toto. It really is Toto uh, to me when I hear uh, uh, Joseph Williams sing. Steve Luca, they're playing, and all these uh, older friends like Warren Ham, John Pierce on bass, who I've known for years, Spud from uh, Spoon Narky Puppy on drums, X on keyboards from uh, uh, Prince's band, and uh, so it's a, it's a really eclectic lineup, and uh, I'm really proud of the guys, and they're really doing a great job. They're very meticulous about detail. And finally, David, happy birthday on uh, the 25th. Uh, oh, gee, I didn't know anybody was still counting. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate that. David, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on Forgotten Toys, and we're looking forward to seeing how this does and more from you in the future. Hey, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and I just want to say hi to all of our friends and fans and family out there for your loyal support all these years. For David Page, I'm Mark Scar on KIOW.